Now let's try to summarize and try to figure out what our examples have in common that's going to help us get a handle on understanding arguments. Notice in each case the author of the argument is trying to establish a point. In the case of the Supreme Court decision, she, the, the letter writer was supporting the Supreme Court's decision. In the case of the death penalty, the author was arguing against establishing the death penalty. He, she, the author, provided reasons that were intended to support the point. I guess we could debate in the first case whether she was really providing reasons that were intended to support the point, uh, but she certainly was trying to be persuasive, trying to convince you of her uh, of her position, I don't think very effectively, but she was trying to do that nonetheless. So she was providing re reasons, and the reasons and the points actually make up the argument. And if you think about it, that's how we come to conclusions about many things, come to our understanding of many things. And what this suggests is that there, this suggests the three different parts of the argument. And they are, you know, at number one, the author is trying to prove or establish some point or claim. What's he trying to establish? The conclusion. Then there are the reasons and the evidence and the points that the author cites to support the conclusions are the premises and the reasons and points with which the author is trying to establish a claim establish the claim combined to form the argument and we can just formulate what we'll call definition. That's why you see D1 there. That is the conclusion of an argument is the statement of the claim that the argument is intended to establish. So if we're thinking about what the conclusion is and if we want to correctly state the conclusion, we want to make sure that it's the claim that the argument is supposed to establish. We should be able to write that in one sentence. And the second definition, the premises of the argument, the statements of the reasons and points that are intended to support the conclusion. And finally, at least for the rest of this course, an argument is not what the Bloods and the Crips do on the street. An argument, rather, nor is it what the you know, husband and wife who are yelling each at each other down the block are doing. An argument, rather, is a set of statements that are intended to provide reasons or evidence for justify or logically lead to the belief in another statement. The reasons being the premises, the point, the, state, the claim that's being defended is the conclusion.